Hi there, Reject Nation. I'm Greg Alba. I'm your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, Jesus and I are going to watch today 10 best movies where the hero learns nothing. Just like Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I knew it all along. I knew all the things were going to happen. Character arc really yeah. deserved <laughs> One of our top reward tiers over our Patreon, whatever video you request, we must definitely do put up on the ear tubes. Today comes from Cameron French, and this is a video from What Culture, a channel I love. I love their list videos, and I love their commentaries. Let's check it out. Let's get some spoilers in our lives. Sometimes movies can teach us life lessons. Liar Liar told me not to lie. Groundhog Day taught us that Bill Murray is utterly brilliant and Lion King has taught us that if you're gonna kill the king, don't leave any witnesses. However, there are many, many films which, because they centre around having a good time and a little laugh with your pals, mean very little and the protagonists actually don't learn anything at all. They don't have a moment which inspires change and end the movie in very much the same way that they began, but with a few more hijinks and wackiness in their rear view mirrors. It's like every so Bond movie. Let's take a look at some of these absolute loads that we <laughs> yeah. love Except for today, two of them. We? Yes, we shall. <laughs> I'm Jules with One Palace Wonder, and these are ten of the best movies where the hero learns nothing. Number ten, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Ferris Bueller's Day Off is one of those great movies that people enjoy on a superficial level as a youngster and once they come of age realise just how much of an asshole Matthew Broderick's titular protagonist actually is but it's still a great movie though. If the I film were a little more was conventional then we'd likely see Ferris change for the better maybe becoming a little less sociopathic along the way However, in this, he's pretty much the same throughout. Cocky, defiant, and there's little sign that he wants to change going forward. It's actually so apparent that it's led many to believe that Cameron is actually the main star of the film, as he actually goes through the more traditional arc of changing and challenging authority. However, as far as Ferris goes, well, he's just a monument to being a dick. And I kind of love it. <laughs> Number nine, Scarface. Scarface uh, yeah. is one of pop culture's quintessential well, rags to descends. riches stories. And though it's inspired the crime genre for three decades, protagonist Tony Montana really doesn't encounter any personal growth or change throughout Brian De Palma's iconic thriller. I mean, you could say that, well, duh, that's because he dies at the end, but there are lots of films that use death as the moment of realization, and this isn't it. Montana is as much a ferocious scumbag when he's fresh off the boat from Cuba as he is when he's huffing a giant pile of cocaine and annihilating goons with a grenade launcher during the film's unforgettable climax. The empire blooms, but the man stays largely unchanged, as he's never <laughs> content. More leads to more and it will never be enough. It's strange, therefore, that Breaking Bad is often cited as a successor to Scarface when in reality they couldn't be further apart in their presentation of their antagonists. Number 8. Fair. No Country for Old Men the Coen brothers have quite a bit of a habit of presenting us with characters who don't change much throughout their journeys. He's the, the dude in The Big Lebowski like... being another shiny example. <laughs> yeah. And in 2007, their unconventional approach won them three Oscars, including Best Picture. Now, in fairness, No Country for Old Men doesn't really have a fixed protagonist, with Josh yeah. Brolin, Tommy Lee Jones, and Javier Bardem pretty much standing on equal footing as focal characters. And each of them is very much the same person at the end as they were when they're first presented to the audience. Though the viewer expects Moss to have a climactic showdown, he's killed before he can go through any sort of transformative heroic experience, while Bell is left powerless to battle the violent world around him, and Javier, well, he just escaped with the money. You could argue that Bell's <laughs> final realization that he's just waiting for death is an epiphany of sorts, but it's not exactly like the guy was a paragon of utility and youthfulness throughout <laughs> the film. He's still on the same axis, just going through the motions. Number seven, Skyfall. Though the Daniel Craig James Can Bond movies have attempted to make 007 less of a caricature and more of an actual person, it's fair to say that he's still a corridor of a human, just going from angry to, well, angsty. To Javier Bardem Royale movies. And Quantum of yeah. Solace gave fans a more tortured and haunted Bond, but follow-up Skyfall saw the spy hunker down into a more typical routine. Yes, the film begins with him badly wounded and drinking himself into a stupor on a beach, but Bond learns precious little from both his interactions with fellow former agent Raoul Silva and the eventual mm -hmm. death of M. At the end, there's no implication that he's learned to better appreciate human life or even acknowledge his own expendable nature, and everything he's experienced just reinforces his decision to be cold and detached, almost exactly like he was at the beginning of the film. Hey. Number 6. The Wolf of Wall Street Though Martin Scorsese's Oscar-nominated epic drama was largely praised by critics, it did receive some criticism for Scorsese's 
failure to outwardly demonize the actions of corrupt stockbroker Jordan Belfort. I took his seminar. A flippant and darkly <laughs> comical depiction of unfettered because wanton of this movie. excess. Business is that was kind of the point though. As Scorsese's other works all revolve around making the audience fall in love with the ideas of excess, then making them feel sick by the end because of how truly excessive it all is. It's a very clever way of making the audience revile characters without actually out and out saying that they're bad people. Sell me this multi-purpose dust. <laughs> <laughs> and to be honest, Belfort did get away with it. And while a more classic version of this story would see him learn the error of his ways, this version is true to real life and it shows him without much regret and forging ahead with the same determination it's still an exploration, that he showed yeah. at the beginning of the film. Now, side note, I always feel sad watching this film, seeing as your mum's scene got cut. You know, the one with the rhino and the funnel and the sperm. Yeah, I mean, she did it anyway, regardless of not having it being filmed, but it just wasn't the same. It was just very, very sad. That's my one palace. The hell are you talking about? Number five, American Psycho. <sighs> Now here's an interesting one, as while Patrick Bateman goes through a lot of things in the film, namely murder, sexual depravity and returning videotapes, come the close of the story, he's exactly the same. He's sweaty and a bit shaken, but he's still embroiled in a world of greed, dinner reservations and business cards, and it becomes very clear that he's gotten away with whatever crimes he's committed. He will never change, because there's been no catalyst to make him I guess change. I've gotten slightly confused with this it, list. Even after admitting this, about not there is arcing. no catharsis. My punishment yeah. <laughs> continues to elude me. Me and I gain no deeper knowledge of myself. No new knowledge can be extracted from my telling. This confession has meant nothing. So yeah, Bateman carries on, and so do we, unsatisfied with the results, but unable to do anything about it. Number four, Nightcrawler. When Nightcrawler opens, lead Lou is a sleazebag with little regard for other people, and when the film ends, he's exactly the same person, just with a lot more money he's and a, a team of lot interns. Worse. To <laughs> he's he's a monster. Sure, but on a personal and spiritual level, Lou's soul is still <clears throat> covered in tar. There's no relief for the audience either, and the only character who represents some semblance of a conscious ultimately ends up corrupted and shot dead for his troubles. It's a very grim Venom. Study of <laughs> Mysterio. Of society yeah. rewards this behavior. No now, you could argue that we still <laughs> learn something from the close of the film, that maybe our attitude towards disposable media and our desensitization through overexposure to violence is something we need to address. But as for Lou, well, he's more than happy to keep providing footage as long as he fits in to the model provided. Number three, young mm -hmm. adults. Jason oh, Reitman's 2011 this. dramedy revolves around Mavis Grey, a 37-year-old woman child who starts <gasps> the film as a divorced, alcoholic, narcissistic sociopath in a clear state of arrested emotional development, and that's exactly how she remains for the entire movie. Despite being told multiple times to grow up and get over herself, she doesn't even take baby steps towards any type of change, literally vowing at the end of the movie that she's fine the way she is, and vows to never change. Oh, I did see this movie. Though, Mavis has <laughs> one minor moment of self-reflection where she considers the possibility of becoming a more mature person, but quickly shrugs it off and restores the status quo in the process. To be fair though, self-improvement is hard, so why even bother? I'm Number two, the good, totally... the bad, and the ugly. It's telling and a fistful of dollars Sergio Leone's classic for Western a few dollars more. Yeah. <laughs> no name because he's ultimately a cipher and other Bond movies. And <laughs> less for his character and more for Eastwood's grizzled, insanely cool performance. The man with no name, aka Blondie, is more of a vehicle than a character, having virtually no backstory nor much of an indication of his personality or feelings about anything beyond killing and making money. And that's totally fine for the needs of the movie. Even when Blondie has to occasionally make moral decisions, it never really feels like it comes from a place of change or growth. His sole motivation is to better himself financially, and there's never any suggestion that he might be starting to develop a soul. <laughs> and number one, a serious man. A serious Aww. man begins with Jewish physics professor Larry Gottman. The Gottlin only one I haven't seen. Oh, this is the one. first one. He to leave him, he's denied tenure at his job, and he's effectively blackmailed into giving one of his students a passing grade. Larry spends much of this movie wrestling with his faith to God and asking various religious figures about the meaning of it all, though none of these men provide anything beyond ambiguous, unsatisfactory answers. And so the film ends without ever giving Larry the solution or personal peace he desperately searched for. He agrees to give the student a pass and almost immediately afterwards learns of a grim medical diagnosis while a gigantic tornado looms over his son's school. It's all very heavy. And as the film is inspired by the book of Job, Larry is left clueless and without any immediate meaning to the events. It inspires the same questions within the audience as to the meaning of religion and whether you should have faith. 
but for poor Larry, well, he learns nothing and is soon to be reduced to nothing as well. Fun stuff, right? Mm. Jeez. And there we go. Those were ten of the best movies where the protagonist learns absolutely <laughs> nothing. And if I've learned absolutely nothing, it's to not stop plugging the t-shirts that I've got for sale over at shop.whatculture.com. We've got one per list ones, and we've got having a giraffe ones. Please come and support me. It's not just a channel anymore. It's about this big, bold, bad boy right here. You can't really see me, but I am gesturing to myself. Go follow me at RetroJ with a zero over on Twitter. And as always, I've been Jules. You've been awesome. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Now right, you guys can subscribe to the Reject Nation because we've learned nothing. We're the same as when we started this video. Yeah, I guess like the first half of this video, I was like, but but they do, <laughs> they change, they evolve. But then I'm like, okay, well, I was, I was getting the title mixed up with the, the concept of character arc. Because yeah, a lot of these characters don't arc. You definitely get to explore them. Like I think there's movies like Wolf of Wall Street, American Psycho, and Nightcrawler, <laughs> where it's about watching them sort of not evolve, but devolve hashtag deep <laughs> into yeah. something monstrous <laughs> and watching the way that that affects the people around them yeah like supporting characters kind of change for having interacted with them and you still learn more about them as the film progresses it's not to say that they're just this stagnant character yeah. i feel like bond if anything is that, <laughs> is that one or or like the man with no name tends to be that one too where you barely learn anything different about them like skyfall is kind of a unique case because because it sets itself up to have an arc <laughs> and a lesson where he's like, I'm not with MI6 anymore. He's washed up on the beach. He drinks all the time. And he's not doing any spy stuff. And then he starts getting back into the game. Can't really shoot. He's out of shape. So out then of shape. it kind of just ends <laughs> 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 later on. Harvey Bardem becomes more interesting than him. <laughs> you know, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. It's still a great movie. But when you look at it, you're like, it does set itself up for some kind of character arc. But you don't really get that with him. <laughs> it seems like a problematic proposal for Bond in general to have. Uh, yeah. Yeah, like one arc. movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah like, we tried this once. And I don't know. We can keep it up. Scarface is—that's the whole point. Is he doesn't learn though? Like that's yeah, that's a big part of his lesson <laughs> is that he doesn't learn his lesson, and that then the consequence of that is he dies. Mm -hmm. Cautionary tale. Where I—that's why Breaking Bad is a successor in some fashion. Vince Gilligan did say that Breaking Bad has its inspirations drawn from Scarface. Watching this guy evolve into that, like Walter White, who never learned. <laughs> yeah. Who had a million opportunities to go back. Like, he arcs, he learns some shit, sure. By the end of it all, he never left what he was doing. And then he has to pay the consequences for that. And that's very similar to what uh, Scarface has to go through here. And No Country for Old Men is also a unique case because mm -hmm. it has such a weird structure. Yeah, that was what I was thinking when that one started was I was like, well, who is the actual protagonist of this movie? Because we do have these central figures that we keep cutting back to and we don't really know much about any of them. Yeah, and then even when some people <laughs> I remember like they talk about it here so I'm gonna talk about it but, like when Josh Brolin dies you don't see his death mm -hmm. they just walk into a hotel room and, and he's dead it's so weirdly told they don't really get room for that but that's another one where it's like human study you're watching the situation and how these characters behave in there so yeah it's like, like you're not watching the critical moment at which they're about to change like most movies would you're just watching the various situations play out with them in them yeah yeah it's like some people might take it as to have a character they need to have an arc or they need to learn something by the end or whatever but sometimes uh there's more to having character than just that it can just be exploration like the joker is not the main character in the dark knight he's the antagonist but he's a very constant character who doesn't learn anything but no one's gonna say he's not a character yeah you know? exactly, exactly. <laughs> characters arguably ought to learn something but if you're good enough as a writer they don't have to like, well i mean if you look at the majority of this list the majority of them are anti-heroes yeah you know? yeah exactly. you got scarface you got uh, jordan belford you got um uh, Miles Fisher. <laughs> <laughs> you got uh, Patrick Bateman. Patrick yeah. Bateman. Yeah. I don't remember young adult. But she sleeps with uh, Patton Oswalt who has like a broken penis or something. So Aww. she arcs. She fixes his dick. She learns to, after, you know, being all self-absorbed and to be a little child, she, she sleeps with the guy who would never successfully get Charlie's their own in the sack <laughs> in real life. <laughs> See, that's a, that's a complete arc for and both like, of Of course them. I'll do this movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Please. <laughs> Please, I beg you. <laughs> oh.
<laughs> American Psycho was the one that kind of pushed me because I was sitting here thinking, well, towards the end, doesn't he kind of have like a breakdown that you could kind of classify as at least flirting with the change? But then I was realizing like he flirts with a change or, you know, some kind well, yeah, of revelation. He, he has the breakdown. He was on the phone. He's yeah. like calling his lawyer or something. Yeah. And he, and he, and he's and he, killed a lot of people. I have to kill a lot of people. He's acting as if he's made a mistake. Yeah. 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 He's freaking out. And then, you know, we see that that doesn't carry through necessarily and we're sort of left to wonder. But I felt like that left something there. I think Mary Poppins could be on this list. She's yeah. the main character. What's she learn in that movie? So there's nothing. She just keep on keeping on <laughs> yeah. doing her Mary Poppins thing. She learns deadly squat. I mean, the way everyone reacts to her, why change? <laughs> I was like, Mary Poppins? If Mary Poppins says it, well, Mary Poppins knows. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I still think it's a good list. I don't disagree with their list, you know? Well, and the topic... It's, just, it, it's easy to confuse what the topic is for yeah. something else, you know? Yeah. But I do think it's an interesting topic because that's one of the things we talk about the most is like character arcs and the growth. And yeah, things like yeah. that. And, and it's fascinating to see movies that can succeed without those things. Yeah. All right, well, thank you, What Culture, for this awesome list. And thank you, Cameron French, for requesting this. Cameron Cameron French, you know, he actually uh, was really open up to me about how bummed out he was about the lack of nominations Hereditary received at the Golden Globe. And, you know, yeah, you know uh, Tony Collette, does she really learn? She learns about her family history. But That's about it, yeah. Does she really learn something that mm. changes her? Mm. Not really. It makes sense why you asked us to cover this video. <laughs> Hope you're doing well, buddy. I know we've been talking a lot lately. This, this guy and I like to go back and forth plenty about, uh, you know. Back and forth. Uh huh. Back and forth. What? You know, like, never mind. What were you getting at? You know, like a sex joke, because the uh, copulation activities usually are a back and forth motion. You no, know, we usually talk back and forth about <laughs> hey, what movie do you love that other people hate, or what movie do you hate that other people love? And we like to really discover our difference of opinions and not just agree on things. He's such a fun guy to talk with. He's been one of our top pledges for such a long time. So Cameron, I just want to give a really sincere thank you to the amount of time you've been with us at our Patreon page and uh, yeah. the fact that you haven't changed your pledge this entire time has been like crazy to us. Mind blown. <laughs> and so you've, you've been one hell of a supportive guy and you're a big contribution to what's kept the channel alive. So thank you, buddy. I really love the hell out of you and hopefully in person one day we will get to meet. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching along. What's your favorite movie where a character doesn't learn diddly squat comment below you guys can subscribe to the reject nation click that notification bell and check us out on patreon tv show reaction watch alongs weekly q and a's this guy does music video coverage check it out